everybody to Raising Vibrations. Uh, this is Simon. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit on Chiron and also just uh, letting you know where my consciousness is at regarding this uh, archetype. I've recently been exploring it a little bit and going really deep into the nature of what it represents. And I've pulled out or extracted some, some really cool insights. And so I'm going to share with you some of those insights today. And I also want to let you know that I'm actually creating or have created uh, weekly workshops regarding Chiron. And uh, the intention with this is for me to not only practice my intuitive knowledge regarding Chiron itself, but also to allow you to have access to what it actually means in your birth chart. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit about what I've been exploring. And I've also created a 45 minute uh, workshop on this. So 45 minute teaching. And then I also I'm going to get everybody that wants to participate in that workshop to bring your charts along and uh, we can look at that for you. And I'll give you all the information at the end of this video. The links will come up and it's also in the description. Okay, so Chiron itself, uh, there's many different versions of this story in terms of, you know, interpretations. And uh, the reference point that I'm going to be using is an infusement of sort of Jeffrey Wolf Green's type of stuff, um, Barbara Hanclaw's uh, work, some of Tom Jacobs's work as well, and really just kind of illustrated in a way based on what I have explored regarding this, okay? So basically what we're looking at here, just to kind of give everybody an understanding, if you're new to Chiron and uh, you want to understand it more intimately, Chiron is um, from a more archetypal perspective, a representation of half man, half animal, okay? Now, of course, when we're working with archetypes themselves, we have to recognize that they are symbology or they are symbolic of uh, aspects of our spiritual nature, okay? There, there, there are representations of ourselves and how we operate, how we, we express. So Chiron plays this role as, as I said before, the centaur, okay? Now, again, for anybody that's probably looked at Chiron, you've, you know, you've seen this information before, that's great. I'm really just trying to give everybody an opportunity to understand it, um, going from basic to really adept knowledge, all right? So, and then you can also see that he has the arrow. Now, generally what happens with um, imagery of Chiron, he's actually pointing the arrow upwards. And um, the intention behind pointing the arrow upwards is a representation of a quest, okay? It is taking an arrow and, or a bone arrow, and then sort of aiming it into the distance, preferably upwards, because the spiral of DNA is upwards, and letting it go. So there's an element to the symbology of exploration, okay, which, which would naturally be the case, because if you really tap into the Sagittarius archetype in the constellation, you'll know that there's also the um, archetype of the, the centaur, as well as the, the arrow pointing. So, of course, there is questing here that is involved, you're right? So what comes along with questing, right? There is direct experience, there's growth, there's knowledge, there is wisdom that is gained. So we can already understand that just from looking at the symbol of the, of the archer itself, that this archetype comes with knowledge, comes with wisdom, and the acquisition of that, okay? Um, the relationship between half man, half uh, horse can symbolize, you've probably seen within, um, you know, various types of teachings, it's the wounded healer. And as an archetype, the wounded healer representing part of ourselves that is related to Saturn. In fact, to me, this is how I understand it. This is my interpretation. It's the relationship between Uranus and Saturn. Okay. And if you, if you observe it very, very carefully, Uranus and Saturn within our spheres, in other words, our ability to understand ourselves for, as a multidimensional self, is the relationship between growth, okay? Stagnation and growth. Remember, Saturn is boundaries and Uranus is liberation. So what would naturally occur here is that the boundary or limitation would be the animalistic part of ourselves, okay? Now, for anybody that's really studied deep into spirituality, and maybe um, esoteric understanding, you'd recognize that we have these different layers within ourselves. We have the animal kingdom, we have the mineral kingdom, and of course, we also have our spiritual kingdom as well. And so the 
spiritual kingdom and animal kingdom and uh, mineral kingdom are levels within ourselves that make up us totali uh, the totality of us. So the representation of this is how we transcend our physical needs and access our spiritual uh, story. Okay. And the process of going about doing that is through wisdom and knowledge gained, which is why if you recognize the Trinity, you'll know that there is the father, the mother and the son, or through sacred geometry, again, you have the Vesica Pisces, or if you have man and female that come together, they create the third entity, which is you or us or the child. And that becomes experience. So just from understanding the symbology over here, you can already start to recognize what's being offered regarding Chiron and what it is representing in terms of the birth chart. Now, from Barbara Han Klaus perspective, she represents it as the bridge, the rainbow bridge and Chiron representing that ability to access the Uranian field from Saturn, which makes complete sense in my opinion, because of course, if you're in the Saturnian box, as it were, which is that over there, and you're trying to access the Uranian field, which exists outside the perception of our physical senses, you would naturally need to transcend that. So what I do in this workshop is actually show the representations of how that is operating in our consciousness and then also transcending that by recognizing what Chiron's function is in that birth chart. Okay, so Chiron in that way, key points that I want to really put across to you was that representation of boundaries, Saturn, liberation, Uranus, and of course, the, necess the, the actual understanding regarding how to transcend that. To me, that's what Chiron represents. So it's the wounded healer would be taking on the part of ourselves that has lived in isolation, that has lived in boundary, in bondage. And then through the a limited perspective that we have, we then of course then assimilate within our cellular memory experiences that make us feel alienated by life, God, source, however you want to put it, the absence of love. And if you really know your archetypes really well, you'll know that Uranus itself is an Aquarian archetype and that's detachment. Whereas when you recognize the polarity point of Uranus, it's actually Leo, which is what? The heart, the sun. So when you go from detachment to the sun, you're going from uh, a complete and utter disassociation with energy and vibration to a fulfillment, a fulfillment of your existence, of your life. You feel the, the, the sun coursing through your, um, your body. You feel your heart, uh, like beating basically. So you can see how this uh, wounded healer archetype comes in here because it's like allowing you to go from the wounded state of disassociation to this process of self-validation and creative self-actualization and that process being that case. So okay. some of the other stuff that I'm going to be showing you in um, this current teaching as well as what you'll get in the workshop is the understanding of how to actually observe spheres within our consciousness. Now, for many of you out there at the moment, um, we can observe straight away that the moon is the closest sphere to our uh, earth, okay? And so therefore, the most immediate perception of ourselves is the reflection of the moon. So we are, and moon is identity, moon is ego, moon is physical self. So if our perception in terms of consciousness is being streamed from, from the center of our being straight to the first sphere, then that filter that we have of identifying ourselves is going to be through the moon, which is why if you look at the world today, many, 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 many people will naturally have their security and sense of identity linked together and also threatened, creating control. And that's why if you really tap into the esoteric understanding of, of reality at this stage, Saturn and the moon have got a very, very strong correlation to the manipulation on earth at this point, and at least the entrapment from the five senses. So I'm going to show you how to understand the relationship that Chiron has to Uranus, as well as Saturn in the birth chart regarding this perception orientation and how to get there. Okay. And it's actually quite fascinating, to be honest, when you observe your consciousness from this perspective, because your sight or perception of yourself is always directly linked to the spheres in which your, your earth chart is working at. 
So if you can access that that perception within yourselves and recognize your relationship to it, you can actually transcend your birth chart, which is one of the major key aspects that is associated with Chiron and of course Uranus. So um, some other aspects that I really wanted to convey to you and also going to show you in this uh, workshop as well is the relationship between time and space. So at the moment, your perception of yourself can be up to here, and then that's the boundary of how you identify yourself in the world. And Uranus sits at this sphere of here saying, come on, let's come on, kiddo, let's like break that boundary in which we perceive ourselves to be and Saturn situated over here. And in between is a barrier. And so that's why it's called the wounded healer, because it's the relationship that we have to our situations and circumstances that require evolution and our inability to recognize that that is what's occurring. So obviously there's a key element of surrender here that needs to take place as well as dissolving. And that would then naturally then go to evolution, involution, pardon me. So the passage towards Uranus actually correlates to a necessity for surrender and also to, um, at the same time, involute, like to, to literally break down the barriers so that you can see beyond what is currently happening in your life at this stage. Okay. But another thing that I also wanted to show you that will be worked with in this workshop and also that's really important to understand Chiron, especially when you're going from the Saturnian field of consciousness to the Uranian field, is that it, it, it's got to do with what is called samskaras as well. Okay. Now, when we're playing with samskaras, we're recognizing the relationship of the fourth dimension, which is, you know, very loosely uh, can be perceived as the astral realm. And for, you know, many, 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 many souls, including myself on this planet, we have, you know, samskaras, we have imprinting, emotional imprinting that has kept us feeling disconnected. And if you've watched any of my other videos, particularly the one called Cosmic Connection, I'll show you specifically how that actual abandonment and trauma occurs. So Chiron has got a lot to do with our feelings of abandonment and trauma in and where we have felt the absence of love. Again, as I was sharing with you earlier. So what we have here, and this is a really big thing because if everybody knows, Chiron is currently in Pisces at this stage. And Jupiter at this point in time is actually, and today's date is the 21st of November, 2015, for any of you that are watching this video afterwards. Uh, Chiron, Chiron is actually in opposition to Jupiter and Virgo. So there was these most recent Paris attacks that was occurring. And one of the things that was really, really amplified during this experience was our collective trauma and abandonment. Because what's happening here is, is that we all have this collective samskara regarding terrorism. Okay, and the trauma associated with it, which comes through 9-11 and the psychological operations that are occurring there. So naturally what happens is, is that there's a threat that creates the, the, the reaction from the people. So it's very, very simple. It gets used all the time. Threat, reaction, solution, okay, or problem, reaction, solution. And if you use it negatively, then of course you have an agenda that gets pushed. Whereas from a more spiritual s story, this signature or this way to understand how to heal some scars in your birth chart and in your own astral body uh, is a very powerful thing. And Chiron actually offers us this understanding in a deep, deep way. So it's accessing that ability to how to nurture those traumas and those abandonments. So it's pretty neat in that sense. Something that I really wanted to convey to everybody here as I just end off this video for everyone and to let you know that as you go through your Chiron story, you actually have a paradigm shift, which is amazing. And that is the major key to transitioning from, from Saturn to um Aquarius is the paradigm shift that occurs because if you observe this picture from this way, you see a duck. And when you observe it from that way, you see a bunny with its ears. And it's such a beautiful way that the perception of your life changes through the Chiron story. So yeah. All right, everyone. Um, this is what Chiron is about. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts on how I'm approaching it. As I said before, I've got a wonderful workshop. It's about 45 minutes long, as well as then an interactive live uh, session. Uh, with people that are joining the groups and will work through your birth chart as well. So if you're interested in that, there's a link that's going to come up the top over here. You can click on that and get all the details. And um, one is actually, or I'm having two today, which is the 21st of November and 22nd. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up for it. Uh, there's a couple of people that have signed up already for it. So I know that there's some space available. 
if it's full, then as I said before, I'm going to be holding this uh, consistently. So there is a recording that you can just download off the website as well. All right. Other than that, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed where I'm going with this uh, experience. And I hope to see you in some of the workshops that I'm creating. And uh, other than that, hit the like and subscribe button and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.